Hey Tenor Drummers! So when I was going through the Boston Crusaders music for the last video I did on their sweep pattern, I noticed something interesting that I wanted to point out to you. Here we have White Whale Part 1. Thank you again for the transcription, Mr. Drescher. And as you go down, you see that the quarter note is set to 180 beats per minute, okay? But then, a little bit later, we switch to dotted quarter note equals 180 beats per minute. And you can also see that the time signature changes from 7-4, so 7 quarter notes per measure, to 12-8, so there are 12 eighth notes per measure. And you see that again, we switch back to quarter note equals 180, but then back again to dotted quarter note equals 180. And I was just thinking, why would you do this? So let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between these two. So here you see the top screenshot is quarter note equals 180, and we have these groups of triplets here. And you can see we have the three above them, which indicates a triplet. Down here, we have the dotted quarter note equals 180, and we also have groups of three notes, but this time we don't have the three above them. But guess what? When you're playing along to a metronome that is clicking at 180 beats per minute, both of these are gonna be interpreted the exact same way, right? Because here we have essentially 12 notes for the measure, and same thing down here, we have 12 notes for the measure. So up top, we have count one, count two, count three, count four. And then down here, even though this is 12, eight, we can still kind of think of it as four, four with count one being right here, count two being right here, three and four. And yes, my drawing with a mouse is not very good. So essentially, even though these look different, they are actually the same exact rhythm. Let's take a look at a couple other subdivisions in this dotted quarter note equals 180. So here we have dotted eighth notes down the drums and ending with a dotted quarter note on drum four. So these you can actually think of as just regular eighth notes because again, our metronome is clicking at the dotted quarter note, all right? So when you're playing along to your metronome, just think of this as one and two and three and then Count four is a rest. Take a look at another one. So here, these look really weird. I, you know, just looking at dotted 16th notes makes my brain hurt. But here, again, since our metronome is clicking at dotted quarter note equals 180, you can just interpret these as regular 16th notes and eighth notes. So this would be one e and a two and three and a four and. Moving on, here we have a group of three quarter notes and then a dotted quarter note and a dotted quarter note rest. Now, so this dotted quarter note and this dotted quarter note rest, this equals about half of the measure. So we'll consider it two counts, two clicks of the metronome. So that means these three quarter notes occur over the first two clicks of the measure. So this is like a three over two feel, right? You have three notes occurring over two counts. And actually we're gonna take that one step further in this other pattern, you see, whoa, there's a lot of notes here. Wait, we have the dotted quarter note equals 180, but we still have the three above the notes. What does that mean? So again, let's break this in half and just look at half of the measure. So you can see this is two clicks of the metronome and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes. Interesting. So as you can imagine, we're gonna interpret this as a nine lit over two counts. Now, if you just focus on the first note of each of these groups of three, it's the same as going back to our quarter notes, right? There are three of these over two counts, and now we have three of these over two counts with some notes added after them. So if you're still confused about this nine-lit pattern, definitely go back and check out my nine-lit video. I posted it a couple years ago, but it goes over exactly this kind of thing, a nine-lit over two counts. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that helps clear up some confusion you may have had. I'm sure there's a great explanation as to why the Boston Crusaders decided to write the music that way with the different time signatures 
probably has to do with phrasing or whatever. Essentially, we're still just doing the same thing. We're breaking apart the counts into different rhythmic subdivisions. If you still have any questions about how to interpret these rhythms, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you on the next video. I'm sure there's a very good explanation as to what some I'm sh now I'm sure that I'm definitely not critiquing the Boston Crusaders uh